Welcome back. Uh, we are shifting to politics now and uh, we are chatting with attorney at law, Mr. Martin George. Uh, good morning to you, Mr. George. All right. So, uh, Mr. George will be with us in about one second. Uh, we're talking about politics, politics perhaps maybe in Tobago uh, on a smaller scale and on a larger scale, Trinidad and Tobago the relationship between Trinidad and Tobago and the Prime Minister's call um, for elections in Tobago and the THA's response, well, the Chief Secretary's response to that call. Um, so, you know, quite a little bit to talk about as it relates to politics in Tobago and Trinidad. In Tobago and Trinidad. We have Mr. George on, on, on set with, well, not on set, but on Zoom with us. Good morning to you, uh, Mr. George. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the virtual set. Good morning, Lance. And on, it's a pleasure to see you and to chat with you this morning. Indeed. And good morning to your viewers on TV6. And good morning to Trinidad. And a special good morning to Tobago. <laughs> it's indeed because Tobago <laughs> is in focus as we talk <laughs> politics. So, I mean, you've been following um, quite, I'm sure, um, excitingly, uh, you know, developments <laughs> in the political landscape over the last couple of days. We have seen um, the Prime Minister. After a while, I'm not too sure what may have prompted it because uh, it's been a while now since um, um, Farley Augustine, the Chief Secretary, and his um, team would have announced their independence. Uh, they would have pulled yes. out of the... Uh, in December. In, in, in December. So, and we are now in April. Um, so, what, would you, what do you think may have prompted the Prime Minister, before we get into what the Prime Minister has called for, what do you think may have prompted his, his call? Um, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what may have, you know, agitated him at this point, but um, it's definitely something one would have expected probably even earlier, that it would have been a, a rallying cry for the PNM party to say, hey, listen, you know, we are beating the drum for fresh elections because that's the PNM's best option at this stage. Because if it is that they can force fresh, fresh elections and you have a three-way fight, then they probably stand quite a good chance of maybe trying to see if they can, you know, pit one against the other in terms of the TPP and the PDP and see if they can run through the middle. Yeah. So, but, you know, I mean, yeah. one would have thought that that would have been on their drawing board since December when but, but, these persons resigned from the PDP. Well, well in fact, um, the Tobago Council of the PNM really has been calling for uh, fresh elections. But um, right, the, yeah, for so the but Prime Minister... You asked me about the Prime Minister, yeah, right? But yeah. For the Prime Minister yeah. now to make that call, you know, it actually puts a different kind of a, a um, it adds a little bit more weight to it yes of course of yeah. course of course so, of course so so let's talk about let's talk about the you know his call for fresh elections you were saying that it was expected really um the the the, the, the reasons that he's placed on the table for the elections and the, the tobago council as well uh, what in, in your view do you consider to those to be valid valid concerns well, valid the thing is, i mean as i've always said it's pellucid that there is no legal imperative on them to dissolve the THA, resign their seats, and call fresh elections. But what the about precedents? The, the, sorry, just now, let me finish. The sure. National Parliament has provisions which cover that. And, you know, it's clear under the Cross and the Floor Act and those provisions there that, look, if you leave the political party or the political vehicle in which you rode into office, then you can no longer remain in that seat. You have to resign your seat by election is triggered, etc. In the THA Act, there's no such legal provision. But there are other considerations. There can be, you could look at it from a moral perspective, a, an ethical perspective, in the sense that persons can validly say, this is not what we voted for when we voted you in on a PDP platform. And there's no escaping that. If you understand me, there mm -hmm. is absolutely no escaping that. You would have come into office on the principles, practices, philosophies, procedures, the manifesto the of money. the PDP. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if it is that you are now saying to us that this here is a totally different thing, you know, then people could validly question it and say, well, hey, did we sign up for this? 
yeah. if you understand me, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. is this what we really, um, you know, put our faith and trust in when we cast our ballot? And those are questions which I think are valid from a an ethical and moral perspective. Well, and that's a good question, to, uh, a good point to ask the other question. Because given the given the the, the, Nash, the laws on the national parliament, as you have just stated, that requires someone who crosses the floor to resign, do you think it's a reasonable expectation for such um, a call to be made to the incumbents in the Tobago House of Assembly? Well, you, you can make the call, but I mean, you don't have a legal basis for underpinning that call to say, look. This must apply. And the reason why I would say that, it's emphasized by the fact that those provisions were entrenched in the legislation governing the national parliament even before the Tobago House of Assembly Act was crafted and drafted. So in other words, the framers of the THA Act would have known of that provision at the time they were drafting the THA Act. And whether by inadvertence or deliberate design, those provisions were not included. So therefore, there's no legal basis to say you can force someone. But as I say, you can make the argument otherwise to say basically, you know, what, what, you, what you promised me. You promised me, you know, a bag of mangoes and, you know, I mean, halfway between your promise and passing it to me when I open it, it's a bag of oranges. Hmm. I mean, okay, yes, oranges may be good, but the point is, if I, you know, put my faith and trust in you and voted for mangoes, then, you know, how could you now be giving me oranges? Yes. It's, it's, it's two totally different things. Yes. Now we know uh, you... I mean, I, I use oranges um, <laughs> not, <laughs> not lightly because it seems that orange appears to be the preferred <laughs> color, burnt orange, for the new party. So <laughs> there, okay. there's always a, a method to, to what I see, to right. things I see. So, <laughs> so we have established there's no, legal, there's no legal obligation on the part of the THA or the, the executive of the THA to, to follow suit um, the national parliament. What is your... Um, th what are your thoughts on the response by the THA th Chief Secretary to the Prime Minister's call? How, one, his response, how he responded? All right, well, Lance, you know, my um, basic philosophy, my training, my upbringing has always been one which mandates that there must be respect for office holders and persons in authority in our country. And in that regard, I certainly did not appreciate the, the, the term that was put into that response, if you understand me. You know, if, if you wanted to say, mind your business, then that's fair enough. You could say, well, that's part of the political cut and thrust. But when you qualify it with that term, I think it really, you know, begins to color outside the lines. And it's not what we expect of our leaders. It's not a good example for our children. It's not a good example for our followers or for citizens generally, because you must always show that respect. In other words, it's possible to disagree without being disagreeable. It's possible to have differences of opinion without, you know, you're descending into the gutter and, you know, beginning to use language which appears to be offensive. And in that regard, you know, I am not enamored with the way um, Mr. Augustine crafted that sentence. I, I thought it, it could have been a little bit more diplomatic, especially given the position you hold as Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly. You basically represent the people of Tobago, and you must always do that with a certain level of dignity, decorum, and aplomb, regardless of the circumstances. But, 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 but are, we, are we surprised, though, by the way in which um, he would have crafted to use um, one of your terms, the, his response, because that seemed to have been, uh, if you've listened to his responses um, to, not to, 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 to the, the central government over the period, they have been somewhat a little bit, you know, um, coarse, terse, um, and I'm being very, very diplomatic here in, in, in the, 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 the vocabulary. That <laughs> You're, I'm learning You're learning from me. You're learning from me. Yeah, I'm learning from you. 
So but, the, the, the but, thing is, you see, um, I, I think it, it's th th there's a bigger problem we face in Trinidad and Tobago. If, if you look around generally, Lance, we are fast becoming a nation which, as the English philosopher Thomas Hobbes wrote about in the 16th century, when he said, you know, life has become sharp, short, and brutish. And we are beginning to develop that in our society in Trinidad and Tobago generally. You know, you look at people's comments on social media, the statements they make, you look at the statements even of some of our leaders, you know, and you begin to wonder where are we headed in terms of that. So th th there seems to be a general lessening in the quality of our civility, our gentility, our respect for one another. And we feel that, you know, we could just say anything, do anything. And if that is a pattern that the THA is going to be adopting, then I would certainly urge them not to do so and not to, you know, go down that road. You know, because that is not the example you want to set. You want to set yourself apart. You know, remember Michelle Obama, when um, the, you know, second campaign was taking place and the Republicans launched all sorts of nasty attacks against um, Barack Obama, said all kinds of things. Even when Joe Biden was running and she was, you know, helping supporting the campaign, she always maintained, she said, listen, when they go low, we go high. If they want to go down in the gutter, Leave them there. Don't go down in the gutter with them. Maintain your high moral and ethical standards. And trust me, people will always respect you. And I think that that's something that, you know, if we have leaders in the THA and leaders even in the national parliament, mm. that's something that they ought to all take on board with those words of Michelle Obama, um, because she was proven correct in her approach. Yeah. And apart from the arena of respect because that's what we have been talking about how we respect offices and so on Up, let's move out of that and let's talk about um, another issue perhaps maybe even a bigger issue the relationship between Tobago and Trinidad such a language such language how does that enable um, or, or, or disable <laughs> the relationship between um, Trinidad and does it affect it at all, do you think it, it's 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 going to damage that relationship further if there is any um, damage between the both islands? Well, I mean, in, to the prime, prime minister's credit, uh, he did say that um, you know he will ensure that central government continues to do its duty towards the THA. He did say that, so I mean, I guess we do have his words there on paper as to what he said. I mean, of course, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Because, I mean, no one could ever forget the vicious backlash that former Prime Minister Eric Williams visited on Tobago when Tobago had the temerity and the unmitigated gall <laughs> to decide that they rejected the PNM. You know, I mean, he basically shut down the Ministry of Tobago Affairs and, you know, he starved the Tobago of resources. And, you know, it, it was it was a vicious, you know, backlash that he that he visited upon Tobago um, in that regard. So we want to hope that, I mean, Dr. Rowley um, is true to his word when he says that, you know, central government will continue to, you know, do what is necessary. But the thing is, if you look at it, Lance, there is a narrative in Tobago that I think the leaders feed upon, particularly when they are not part of the central government, where they try to pit Tobago against Trinidad. So it's like an us versus them type of scenario. Their followers love that because they seem to always, you know, love to play the, 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 the trump card of, you know, we are oppressed, we are repressed, we are the downtrodden and we are being taken advantage of so it works wonderfully into the fabric of their political narrative and they are able to basically go out like the Pied Piper and they are selling that dream and that but narrative <laughs> and that narrative uh, uh, Martin George is not a new one I mean full disclosure no, it's that, 
that's the thing. It's not a new one. And, you know, the, the reality of it is there are actually more Tobagonians living in Trinidad, working, <laughs> contributing to society, doing everything. I, I know a famous news reporter by the name of Lance Motley <laughs> who lives in Trinidad, you know. So, you know, the, the reality is, you know, we have to understand how politicians use these machinations and manipulations to get people riled up for what they want them to focus upon. And we, the sensible, rational persons who have, you know, some sort of influence, must be the ones to be able to distill sense from nonsense and show the public, show the population that, look, hey, this narrative of a war, it, it, it's not something that is real or sustainable because at this point we are still one nation yeah, a twin yeah. island nation it's two islands one nation so okay yes you can make representation and say look um you know this is not being done properly okay. you're not getting enough of these resources or you're not being treated well in this regard and that's fine nothing's wrong with that All but right. the point is if you want to pitch it yeah. as you know an ongoing war tug of war between trinidad and tobago that can't be good for a twin island nation comprised of two islands in one under one constitutional umbrella indeed it's like in trinidad where the races are pitted against each other so that that there, you have that exactly. narrative in trinidad exactly. in tobago is about exactly. tobago or trinidad against tobago but we just have a few more minutes uh, actually a, a few more seconds and i want to engage you what are your thoughts on Watson Duke's apparent um, uh, pulling back from attacking the uh, the chief secretary. He has actually said that um, his l comment, I think was yesterday or the day before, that that would be his last comment, and he's leaving it up to the uh, PNM to do their, what they're supposed to be doing in Tobago. Is that... Do, is that a, um, an, a, an opportunity for him to, we, to, to worm himself way back into um, a relationship with the uh, independents? Do you see that happening? All right. So, Lance, you know, I mean, I always like to bring the international perspective. Look at this scenario in the Republican Party with DeSantis and Trump. All right. DeSantis, he wants to go on the all-out attack against Trump, but he can't because a large part of the vote bank that he wants to capture ultimately are those that support Trump. It's exactly the same thing happening here. Watson Duke wants the base that Farley has in power now. So he wants those same supporters. So therefore, in terms of him attacking Farley, he has to do so in a way that he's careful to try to alienate Farley, but not to alienate his supporters. Yes. Because ultimately, Watson wants those supporters to basically say they're going to come back home to the PDP. Yeah, so it's very, exactly it's very that, strategic. That's very, yes. it's, it's very strategic. It's very strategic. Martin the George. analogy, I think, is quite apt. Quite apt, yes, indeed. Yeah. Martin George, <laughs> attorney at law, um, um, thank you so much. You know, it's good chatting with you. Good seeing you as well. Always a pleasure. Always yeah. a pleasure. <laughs> All, All right. the best. Have a great morning and you thank too. you. Thank you very much. All right, well, now it's time for us to take a break, but let's check out this image captioned Dong on the Islands and a traffic update in Kearney and the Uriah Butler Highway.